Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my amazing co-host and producer of the Model Health Show, Miss Jade Harrell. What's up, Jade? What's going on, Sean? We're in Chicago, live right now. Woo! Hanging out with some of our Model Health Show family, and I'm pumped. I'm very thankful for you guys coming out to hang out with us. It's a special bonus episode today, and we're going to do a Q&A today, all right? I have no idea what they're going to ask me, all right? But we already talked about, we're not going to ask about weird, like, I've got this sixth finger that I need to talk to you about, but this is going to have some relevance to you as well. So I'm very, very excited and grateful to be here. And Jade. Yes, sir. How you doing today? Today, I am swell elegant. <laughs> swell elegant. <laughs> swell elegant today. <laughs> I guess. Yes, I like it. Yes. I like it. Swell elegant. I'm swell. But you swell had like the L extra L's in there. Swell, swell, swell elegant. La 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 Fantastic. Yes. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you for I'm sharing very that one with me. Here. I hope uh, you all Fun too. fact of the tour that I've been on, so <laughs> across the countries to... First time that Jade has been live with me for a meetup. So. I had a sitter. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Yes. Obviously. So I'm very grateful that she's here as well, it's helping to make this possible. Uh, before we get to the show, I want to give a quick shout out to our show sponsor, Onnit.com. Head over, check them out, onnit.com forward slash model for 10% off all of your health and human performance supplements. Who's, what's your favorite product, Onnit product? New Mood. New Mood. New Mood. New mood. Yeah. Shroom, Shroom Tech, Tech Immune, Immune. Hemp Force, mm -hmm. basically everything, guys, okay? <laughs> Check out the Hemp Force Protein for sure, albumin, uh, edestin. Mm -hmm. It also has some of the whole seeds in there. I don't talk about that enough. The hemp seed. Yeah, so yes. which they, they actually have this perfect ratio of essential fats for humans. So our ideal ratio is around 2 to 1 for omega-6 to omega-3s, and that's what hemp, hemp has in it. And I don't think that's an accident. It's like certain foods in nature is like, it tells you they're designed for human health. You know, if you really pay attention to a doctrine of signatures. Yes. So, and it actually tastes good. Mm -hmm. I don't know, has anybody here had like another company's hemp protein before? Don't bother. <laughs> don't bother. Somebody said, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Pretty gross. Oh, she said, not good. She took the Donald Trump route. <laughs> not good. <laughs> I like that. I like it. So, check out the Hemp Force Protein for sure. Mm -hmm. Also, the Shroom Tech Immune with the Cordyceps. Awesome. Uh, I'm really into the MCT oil right now. I actually just did a giveaway for some of that stuff. And uh, it's something I have on a daily basis. The MCT oil for your cell membranes, your nervous system, your brain health. Get on it. He head over to check them out. onnit.com forward slash model for 10% off. And now, iTunes Review of the Week. Alrighty. This is a five star rating that says, Found my driving force, thanks to you from Christian PSU. Sean and Jade, you are an amazing pair. I started listening to your podcast about a year ago and have been hooked ever since. There are so many choices out there, but I stumbled across yours one afternoon when I was waiting at LAX and there was just something different and very real about you both. Fitness and nutrition have always been a passion of mine. I recently completed my certification to become a transformational nutrition coach through yeah. the Institute for Transformational Nutrition with Cynthia Pesquela. Pesquela, yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, Sean, I know you will be speaking at ITN Live this year, so I'm so disappointed that I will miss the event and the opportunity to meet you personally. With this certificate, one of my dreams has come true, but I've been struggling with getting it started. Even the thought of starting a Facebook page to share the information has been terrifying for me. Wow. However, I finally figured out why. I listened to your episode a few weeks ago with your sweet wife, Anne, where you listed the top human needs by Tony Robbins. My number one driving force is certainty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, was I was driving home today and stopped in my tracks. How am I supposed to be an entrepreneur, which is one of the most uncertain career paths, when my number one driving force is certainty? Wow, this has changed things for me. It won't stop me from pursuing my dream, but it has certainly opened my eyes to why I'm having such a hard time taking this leap. Thank you for providing this content. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep inspiring, loving, and staying true to your calling. Fantastic. Oh, my goodness. 
There's so much there that hit me in the heart multiple times. Thank you for sharing that. And wow, uh, it's not an accident as well that um, the Institute for Trans Transformational Nutrition, as of this recording, it's, uh, it's like tomorrow or something. I'm going to be there. Right. Um, but I'm going to speak to some of this uh, that you're feeling right now, which is really stepping into your greatness outside of that parameter of uh, that certainty need that we all have. You know, we've really got to still push our boundaries and consciously ease into that discomfort. But sometimes we kind of get, got to get that fire lit under us. And I, I think that I'm uh, a pyromaniac, maybe? I don't know. Is that, is that a thing? Is that the mm -hmm. right thing? Mm -hmm. But we Super dealt with the same though. thing. Yeah. We were there, too, yeah, at one point. Of yeah. course. Of course. It's, this is what it's all about. Growth. You can't be prepared for it. You know, like you can't be prepared for that new thing. It's going to be new. Mm -hmm. And it's going to force you to become more than what you are now. And that's what it's really all about. And I'm honored that you would share that. And I'm also honored to be a part of your life. So on that note, let's go ahead and get to our special, very special episode today. Yes. We're doing a live Q&A here in Chicago. And a big thank you to everybody who's come out to see me. This is incredible to see all of your faces. And uh, let's go ahead and kick it off. Who's got the first question? All right. So I'm Howard, by the way. Um, What's up? What's going um, on, man? Not much, not much. I'm very grateful to be here right now. Love your stuff, love your show, love your book. Definitely transformed my life. Um, quick question just about when you first got started in this space. Yeah. Um, because I'm one that kind of wants to get into helping some other people out as well, okay. kind of using, uh, I guess, social networking and social media as yeah. a way, as a means to kind of spread kind of a similar message you are. Um, what were the challenges you went through when you initially decided to kind of put yourself out there and uh, come a, become a voice for the things that you advocate, even knowing that you're going to get some backlash from uh, just the fitness community? Because it is very harsh at times. Oh, man, it's such a great question. So already you have a level of wisdom that I didn't have. Like, I didn't know some of this stuff was coming until it was kind of too late. I was in it. Uh, when you're going to be progressive and outside of societal norm, you're going to have some backlash. And so for me, I'm just gonna fast forward first and then I'll go back. As soon as I started to see these things happen, I made a decision to consciously not be a threat, all right? So this is why this word that I'm pioneering is cooperation. Even though I was not pro some of the, uh, some of the treatments for major cancer centers and things like that, I would find a way to fill a spot for them. You know, so Jade has been there and they've had me come out multiple times to speak for some of the biggest cancer organizations in the, in the, in the world, really, because they just see me as something complimentary. I'm not up there just kind of bashing them. And you guys would know this also in my style. I don't like to be dogmatic about things. You know, like everything is an option, but we just want to make sure that's a far down the line option for somebody to go through chemotherapy, for example. Let's analyze some other things first that oftentimes these organizations aren't promoting and a lot of times they don't even know about. So, but then to back up, some of the challenges that I faced, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, with anything new, you're not prepared for it. But the greatest thing that I did was I worked on myself. You know, outside, I mean, I was ravenous about studying nutrition and health and the human body but also I was working on my personal development and my own psyche to make sure that I'm prepared when I do face challenges because a lot of people give up because they're not mentally fit. And I think you're already doing this as well. You know, I can also, I could just tell in your demeanor. Uh, so it's critical in this whole health equation that you're also studying personal development as well. So classic stuff, you know, like Jim Rohn, uh, Les Brown, and we've, I've had on some of the top people in this field on the show, like Eric Thomas, for example, you know, helping you to get, get, get in your game, get your inner game together so you can handle the outside stuff. Uh, another big challenge was <laughs> uh, being in a relationship, you know, and being progressive and working on this career. And my wife, I think she even shared in that show when I would tell her, like, I'm going to be the top nutritionist in the world. And she, I thought she was like, she knew. But in her head, she's like, this guy's kind of nuts. Like, <laughs> how? You know, like I literally, I was working at a gym when, when I met her, you know, I was a strength and conditioning coach. Um, and to see that manifest, but I also 
you have to get people to buy into your vision and to invest in your vision. And how that worked was really, again, addressing her certainty needs. You know, so showing her that I can actually m not just make a living, but make an exceptional living by doing this. So for my wife, like she wanted to make sure stuff was paid for, those kind of things. I was very risk averse. Like I didn't care. I would literally like spend $500 that I didn't have to buy a yoga swing. You know, like I think she mentioned this, like she came home one day, there's this swing like in the middle of our tiny living room. And I'm like, look, I'm so excited. And she just like in her head again, she's like, what did you do? What are you doing? But all of that was investment, investment in myself. So I continued to invest in myself. I made some irrational risk at times, but there was still this rationality behind it that I'm going to make it work. I think it's really important for all of us uh, in the context of being successful in this business or just with your health is to really grab onto the idea that I'm going to make it work no matter what. Because the only surefire way to not achieve your goal is to give up, you know? And so I just didn't give up. I kept on going. Um, so I'm trying to think of one other big challenge that I had because there were, there were many along the way. Um, breaking into this, the top level, right? I knew that I was one of those guys and, and women. I knew that I was one of, one of them. Uh, if not, in my mind, again, the best. And this is why I, I had Bo Eason on the show as well, because that was his paradigm, was I'm going to be the best. I'm not setting out to be okay or to be the third best. I want to be the best at whatever it is. And so the challenge was going from a, an unknown character to being one of the best in the field, in the world. And what, what really came from that was I had to find my voice. So this is the big takeaway from this question. This is the biggest thing I want you to really get this, man. I had some amazing teachers early on that I learned from, that I absorbed. I mean, I listened to countless hours of audio books and summits and books and all this stuff. And we are all really a patchwork quilt of all the things we've been exposed to in our life, all the people, all the messages, we are. But there's still your own essence there. And I had to find my own voice because when I initially started writing, I was writing like I was writing for a, a medical journal or something. It was horrible. Like, don't go back and read my old posts, by the way, okay? Do not. I wasn't being fully me. And when I fully embraced all the things that make me unique, you know, um, there are a lot of great, like, shows on, you know, um, on iTunes. But some of those shows, like, you, you straight up, you have to put your pocket protector on to just push play, right? Or you got to put some coconut oil on your ears because it's so dry. It's just dry to listen to. And I'm, I'm, I'm the cool guy. I'm, I'm a cool person in real life, which you guys are all hanging out with me. And you get to see that I'm a cool person and I care about people. And that's really what my unique selling proposition was. The thing that would set me apart is being a cool person, you know, and somebody that cares and also I make those complex things everybody else wants to sound smart with sound incredibly easy to understand. So those were my things, and I just went full into that with my own voice, and that's what helped me to overcome all these other challenges that came along. So I hope that answers your question, man. Thank you, it's such a great question. Let's give him a hand for that. I just wanna, I wanna encourage you to continue to have your authentic caring voice because it is tangible over the airwaves or whatever platform. The means of distribution will change, just like, not telling my age, but there were devices, CDs, cassettes, some stuff that's prehistoric now. But at the end, it's gonna be you that transfers through and that people will receive. It'll be a frequency that is all your own. And then those that don't understand or give you challenges and grief for it, they're not your target audience. They won't be tuned into your frequency. Mm. And you'll be able to deliver exactly what you're sending out to the people who need to receive it. 
So go for it. <laughs> All right, who's got the next question? What's up, Sean? What's up? What's up, Jade? <laughs> it's good to hang out with you guys. Kind of on the opposite end. Oh, you got to state your name for the jury, man. Okay, my name's Kyle. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to ask kind of on the tail end of his questions, it's yeah. a great question, what uh, were your greatest triumphs so far mm. oh. and kind of the best feelings that you've experienced along this journey impacting so many people and kind of how you define your success and what success means to you? <laughs> In the same realm, you know, the same sort of. I uh, love this question. I didn't know that we were going to go this direction. It's very, that's, that's amazing because this is what it's really all about. I lived all the, all the years when I was in college, going through this condition with my spine, uh, the depression, the, the overweightness, AKA the Pillsbury Dough status of Sean Stevenson. I lived in Ferguson, Missouri, all right? And you guys probably know a little bit about that, thanks to the news. And it was a very volatile uh, area. And that was where I chose to live as a university student but I came from even worse conditions, you know, but I also had great places that I lived too. So to come from, from that environment where there's not a lot of people succeeding, my mindset is not such because of my environment that I can even achieve great success. I just wanna make it. I just wanna live, you know, I just wanna be able to take care of my kids. So one of my greatest triumphs was literally just deciding that I want to help people, you know, like when that, when it went, the, the, the spotlight went off of me and onto everyone else, everything changed for me, you know, and I'm very big about self-care. So I'm not saying don't, don't treat yourself or take care of yourself first, but that takes away so much of the anxiety and the worry, you know, um, you know, if somebody's going to, you know, like when I first started speaking, for example, you know, I've spoken in front of 7,000 people, um, you know, hundreds of people here, 1,000 people here, in small rooms as well. And I would, of course, early on, I would get nervous about those things. But as soon as I would shift that attention off of myself and onto them, onto serving, it, it shifted everything. So that was the first thing. It sounds kind of maybe a little bit um, kind of corny, but it was really about service first. Now, big successes, oh my goodness. The first thing that comes to mind was actually a failure <laughs> that transitioned into a success. Um, so my first book, The Key to Quantum Health, which uh, if, you, if you haven't read it, don't read it, <laughs> all right? <laughs> um, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I was finding my voice. And I still have people to this day. Like it was yesterday, somebody was like, that book changed my life. I'm like, great, because it was an accident, you know? <laughs> so uh, I was figuring it out, but I took that risk. It consumed me. I devoted myself into sharing what I knew at the time and getting that all out of my mind and onto paper and into a way that other people can share it without me being present. Uh, so that was a, a, a big victory, a, a small victory, but did it do the things that I thought it would do, sell, you know, tens of thousands of copies and all this kind of stuff and change all these lives. No, it didn't do that. As a matter of fact, we still have some boxes <laughs> of those books. <laughs> um, but that led to finally writing Sleep Smarter, you know, and actually getting a book deal. But again, that first step, which I self-published, I also self-published the first version of Sleep Smarter, but now I know what I'm doing, all right? I know how to speak in my voice. I know how to structure the material. And that book sold a lot of copies to the degree that there were a lot. Of, I don't know how much I could disclose with the, with the uh, forget it. It's live, baby. So we had like 11 publishers that were vying to get me on there, you know, and this is a that's like a big deal because like one to get to pay attention to you is a big deal. And uh, it was a battle going on. And I was just sitting back like, yeah, fight over me, fight over me. <laughs> And so, but ultimately I knew from the moment when I walked into Rodale's building uh, that they were, I, I knew, and they were actually the first people that I saw, which I had a lot more time to, not, to think other than, but they, it was a passionate group. It, um, it was all women in that particular meeting, very passionate about service. And they, they, they bought into my vision. That was the most important thing. 
because it didn't matter if they said yes or no, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to do this and I'm going to make sure that people find this book. And um, so the biggest success for me was that initial failure that trans transformed into now it's an international bestseller. I right? hit the bestsellers list in the UK. It's getting translated into 11 languages so far. All right. And here, you know, hitting the bestseller list and all that good stuff and um, reaching a lot of people has changed my life significantly. Audio book. Um, the audio book <laughs> hit number one on Audible as well. And um, it's changed my life significantly. So that was, this is probably the biggest thing for me. And uh, lastly, I'll share just one more thing. Um, well, actually two things. One thing, the Model Health Show. Um, this was just an idea. And I've talked about this on the show many times, but the power of an idea, you know, like literally this was just something that I had in my spirit, in my mind, that wouldn't exist if I didn't say yes to it. And it was slow going in the beginning, you know, but I, the first episode, I came out of the gates like I'm reaching a million people day one. And I brought that, that structure, I brought that energy, I brought that, the giving that at the end of the day, what from episode one to episode 200, where we are now, um, is that consistent thing. And so many people, and thank you everybody listening, uh, go back and listen from episode one, because every single show is a standalone masterclass on that subject matter, and I'm very proud of that. And uh, to be able to say, man, my show has been number one in the United States with all of these other big baller shot callers out there doing this is just totally profound and it's just growing, it's still growing because I, like, like the wise sage DJ Khaled says, <laughs> I'll never stop, all right? Last thing I'm very proud of is through all of this being a good father and being a good man and being a good husband through it all. Uh, I, I love my wife so much. We've been together for 12 years. I feel like I just met her, you know? And uh, hopefully she feels the same about me. <laughs> um, but also, you know, having the relationship with my, with my kids, uh, it means everything. So those are my big successes, man. Thank you for asking that question, bro. Awesome. Give him a hand. Who's next? Over here. I'm Jillian. Um, Hi. Hey. I know you were a teen dad and yeah. your diagnosis and everything. What would you, if you could go back and talk to your younger self <laughs> or to younger kids today who are struggling with things in life or diagnoses, what would you say to sum, if you could sum that up? Mm, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, that's, a, that's actually, a, it's a good question, but it's a tough question because I wouldn't want to interrupt my timeline, you know? Um, I had to go through that to become who I am. So, but what I would share with other people who are in that same position as me, young, young people, uh, here, this is something important, so all, especially for those who are in this field of health and wellness, or you want to get into this field, you have to connect with people on a visceral level. You have to find that thing that they're interested in because a lot of kids, they don't care about this stuff. They don't care about, uh, you know, eating spinach or whatever. Like, it's just not a big deal until you connect it with something that they want, be it better skin. Like, at the, when I was working at the university, you know, this kid uh, from India, he, uh, he had just horrible acne. And he saw all these different people I was working with. And one day he just kind of mustered up the courage. He was like, hey, I've got, because it's, it's embarrassing for a lot of this stuff to even talk about. And that's, I know I was embarrassed. Uh, dealing with my health issues, but he asked me, you know, is there anything that you could do? And I told him, you know, a few things. One of the main things is like eliminate the cause. I know that in the Indian culture, they tend to eat a lot of dairy, but here in America, this is a different kind of dairy, all right? The cows have like radioactive powers, right? <laughs> so I just told him just eliminate dairy, and then I told him a few other things, but cut to uh, after the summer break, he, he comes back, it's like three months later, skin is amazing like you would not believe it i couldn't believe it i barely recognized him because his face was covered in bumps and what it was and he was of course, like he almost was like 
like his eyes were, you know, a little wet. All right, guys, we don't cry. We cry on the inside. <laughs> Karate men. <laughs> so, um, but he, and he, he just was so happy to, to see me. And all, the only thing he said was, thank you. He said, thank you. And I connected with something that was important to him. All right, so whether it's sports, because that's, what I, that's how I latched into my 16-year-old uh, son, Jordan. Um, this kid is like taking, all, I'm pretty sure there's maybe less than 5% of the kids at the school that actually take their lunch. You know, and he, it, prob probably less than 1%, all right? But he does that every day because he's focused on his gains, right? And so I connected that to his performance, and he saw, he actually got to see a real world example of it happening when he ate like the pasta dinner or whatever before the game and how he was tired. Like over on the, on the sideline before the game, like he's yawning and he's tired. And he was struggling even with practice if he would eat poor food. So he got to see how he usually feels eating the good stuff, what we're on and what we provide for him. And then also having that experience of, you know, what everybody else is on. And so he comes to me and he's like, dad, like, you know, if somebody gets injured, he's like, I don't know. I know it's because of his food. You know, I know his ligaments aren't good. You know, whatever. Like, I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't like just dig in. I'm just like, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. So uh, that's what I would do. Big, in, big insight for everybody. Connect with what they want, not with what, with what you want for them. Because it doesn't work like that. It's really the same for us big adult babies. We're just adult babies, really. So same for us, but even more so with kids. It's connecting with them on that level. And um, so what, what, what I would share, if I could, if it was even a group of, of students, which I've talked to many schools before, is, and this is always tough because you, you never know where somebody's at in their life. I, I like to instill this concept of being the best version of you, you know, being the best version of yourself possible. You know, like what your current state is, is just one version. It's just one potential, one, one small copy, right? Versus all these other uh, versions of you that are possible, you know? And to, to help to instill in them that you can actually change and manipulate and transform yourself, become more you by playing with some of this food over here or some of these different training techniques or um, doing some things to optimize your sleep, you know? So that's what I would generally do is, but again, this is not that room, you know? But if, if this was about that, I would really dig in on that and creating, dropping that, because also another thing with kids is that it might not manifest now, even for us too. Let's stop just even breaking this. We can plant a seed that might not sprout for years, you know? And it's incredibly powerful. It's incredibly powerful, and we all have that power. So every opportunity I get, and my, 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 my kids know this, like when their friends come around, like I'm, I'm like, hey. <laughs> but I don't, I'm not telling them to eat spinach, all right? I'm like, see this car? And I take them in the car. Like, I'm not an athlete. Because a lot of these kids that come over, like, they think that I made it because of, you know, ball, playing ball, or music, which is a typical thing, right? That kids are one, like, their idols are Lil Wayne. Yeah, Miss Katie, yeah. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know what he's saying. <laughs> right? And he's, you know, not shy about the fact that he's a drug addict. You know, that's their role model. They want the fame and the fortune, but they don't know that this other part comes with it a lot of times, you know? So giving them another op option of what success can look like too. You know, actually, this was from writing books. This car, or this home, or this relationship, you know? To even have that picture of what a relationship looks like. I didn't have that, you know? So giving this to these kids it really boils down to being the example. And uh, this is such a great question. We could do a whole show just talking about this. Um, but for myself, I wouldn't go back and tell myself anything except keep going. Just keep going. So thank you for that. Give her a hand, please. Thank you, guys. Okay.
What's your name? Hi, Phyllis. Phyllis, hi. Hi. Listen, I hear you talk about MCT oil, mm. but I want to know how did it transform your life? What was it like before you started taking MCT oil <laughs> and then after? So I just want your testimony. <laughs> so MCT oil, of all the things that I talk about, this is a low, little bit lower rung because I was already feeling amazing when I started to utilize MCT oil. So I wouldn't be the best testimonial for like taking me to another level. Um, but what, here's a couple of things that I did notice. Um, number one was a sharp decline, which this is the, the issue though, because a lot of guys, a lot of guys like, we want to, we want to be big, right? We want to, we don't, we don't want to lose our, our gains. We don't want to lose our muscle, you know? And uh, I saw a sharp decrease in my appetite was one of the first things. So, and my wife, she generally does this a lot. Like she'll have the MCT oil in her um, Four Sigmatic coffee. Uh, shout out to Four Sigmatic. Yes. Um, so she'll have the MCT oil in, the, in, her, in her coffee, which she loves the, the vanilla uh, emulsified MCT oil. And so she'll put that in there with a little bit of grass fed butter. And like, I, I, I have to remind her to eat you know, a lot of times. And this is from, like, she's snacky poo. Like, she, if there's food out somewhere, she will just grab it and just throw it in there. Like, that's kind of, she's a bear. You know, as Dr. Uh, Michael Bruce talked about on the show recently, which we'll put that in the show notes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, that's one of the big things, was um, a decrease in appetite. But also, this is what I would use, I did this for about a year and a half as my pre-workout, I would have MCT oil. And that helped because I was doing fasted workouts with just green tea, and it was hard. But as soon as I added that MCT oil, which it triggers your body to produce more ketones, which is an alternative fuel, so it helped my body to burn fat better and more efficiently than, oh, thanks, man. Did that fall? So people, Facebook Live's probably been like looking at my, <laughs> looking at my neck or something, or the ceiling. I'm still here, guys. So, um, yeah, so it really helped with my energy. And I actually, that's what I did today. Funny enough, I just, I just had some uh, medium chain triglycerides, cordyceps tea, and went to the gym, did some, uh, some back. Let me share my workout today, maybe. I don't know if this might be of interest. All right. Um, so, bonus sandwich. All right. Going on the road, so I'm going to be gone from home for eight or nine days. I think it's nine days. And that can be a prime opportunity for me to lose my progress, you know, to just to get off track with the things that I've been really working on the past month. You know, like my wife has been on me about doing a new photo shoot. And uh, she's like, you, you know, you really need to. She's never told me to, like, get in shape before, you know, but it's like to, to drop those extra couple of percentage of body fat, you know, and she just kind of hint. She wouldn't say the words because, you know. Uh, she's like, you're good, though. You're really good. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, like you really need to stay consistent. Make sure you do your thing. So the first thing I did before I traveled was I broke out um, a calendar and I jot and I looked at all the days. Uh, it was like Monday through Wednesday that I'm going to be gone. And I, I looked at I thought about all my travel, like which days am I traveling? Um, what are the hours that I need to be places? So, and I wrote out which days I'm going to exercise, which days fit. And so because of this, so I got three days in a row here, um, which today is Thursday. So I had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday before early flight tomorrow and then just kind of get ready for the next uh, presentation I'm doing the next day. Um, so I, I decided, okay, since I've got these three days, I don't want to work like all body parts each day. So I broke it up into like an old school classic bodybuilding split. Rather than I was doing supersets more recently, like upper body, lower body stuff. Um, so uh, Tuesday, I did old school classic chest workout and triceps, which I'm still super sore. Um, and then uh, Wednesday, I did legs, which I'm still super sore, um, which I'm probably when I'm sitting. It's like the first time I've ever sat doing this show before. No, I'm going to get up, actually. But, um, but today, was uh, I just focused on back and, and biceps, really focusing on developing that musculature. Because we, sometimes we forget about our back because we don't see it, you know? Uh, so today, I start off with pull-ups. 
and I did a couple of sets of, I think, 15 to 20 pull-ups to start it off. Um, and then I did a classic lat pull-down. I did th three sets of 12 reps in, right around my body weight, which is you know around 170 pounds, 180, something like that. Um, which I've never disclosed my weight before on the show. We might have to edit that out. I don't want anybody aspiring to be where I'm at because it's different for everybody, you know? Um, which, when it's that much weight, it lifts you up when you put it back, you know? Um, and then I did, uh, they had a hammer, like a hammer machine, like the, is the, the brand. Uh, so it was like a high row machine. I did three sets of that. And um, I did, a little bit of ab work because my wife is her encouragement. <laughs> so I usually, which is so funny because she'll make the joke. She's like, she'll tell people like, I can't stand you guys. Right. Me and my son Jordan specifically, she's like, you guys never do any ab exercise. You eat so much, you still have six packs. I hate you. But it's because of the other things, you know, the, 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 dy the dynamic workouts, the full body workouts, the uh, complex movements of the squats and the deadlifts and the uh, the push-ups and the and the chest presses and the pull-ups is helping your body to burn fat everywhere, you know. But we just had Dr. J. Tita on, which came out this week. How you guys like that episode? Powerful, right? Powerful. And talking about spot treating, you can target specific body parts, but it's it's pretty complex to do that. Overall, the best bet is just do the things that enable your body to burn, to, to elevate your metabolism the most. And so that's what I really focus on. So rarely am I doing like ab exercises or doing curls, right? Curls for the girls. Um, but every now and then I'll throw that in there. That's auxiliary work. That's like if I've got extra time left over, you know? So my, my arm muscles might not just be bulging out of my shirt all the time, but if I take my shirt off, so I'm like hiding all the goodies, right? So like people you never know. So it was like my wife, she, she had no idea when we first got together, <laughs> I'm just saying. Shirt came off, it's a wrap, just like, yeah. So on that note, thank you so much for that question. Uh, give her a hand, everybody, please. Got a question? Good night, my name's Cole. Um, Fantastic, man. Yeah. So, fitness goals don't always seem to align with health and wellness goals. Yeah. So there's certain things that you may do to achieve peak fitness or peak athletic performance that aren't necessarily good for your overall health. Yeah. Like um, eating before bedtime. Yeah. It's great for my, my goals and keeping my gains and repairing my body when I'm sleeping and when I need that nutrients. It is good nutrients, but then that may not be good for my sleep. Yeah. So which one do I go with? What's, do I eat the nutrition to build my gains, or do I get better sleep to help all overall health? Yeah, it's a great question, man. Thanks. I feel like Prince. <laughs> like, get, take the mic off. Um, how old are you? 31. 31. Man, you look great, man. Jason Statham. <laughs> so you're in an interesting position right now where you're transitioning into this, into the 30s, you know, but right now there are some of the healthiest people on the planet are in their 30s, like killing everybody else. How old is Michael Phelps? Okay, he's 30 something. All right, we'll just, <laughs> everybody's 30, 37. Um, but we have to optimize because things do change, you know, with your hormones as you get older. This is what really changes all of us, it's the hormones. Because if you look at your younger self and all the things that you could do and get away with, because I, like, I literally, I had, I, I had the, uh, some visible abs in high school, and I, I mean, like, I should have invested in McDonald's. Like I should have had some stock in them because I ate there so often, but I still looked physically fit because of all the exercise, right? So to answer your question, I truly believe it's a both and world. Like you can have both. 
just for you and your, and I, which I respect so much, your level of intelligence and uh, structure that you probably have with your nutrition and everything and your workouts, you want to be a perfected human being. Like you want to be the best you. And that's obvious. Um, but you can have both. It just takes asking these questions and having that structure. You know, so I'm assuming you're taking probably some uh, like, is it some slow releasing protein before bed or something like that? Yeah. Like some um, vegetables, um, eggs. Yeah. So a lot of people would do like uh, casein. casein. Yeah. Are you doing that? Um, not currently. Okay, but you have. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying casein is the bee's knees or anything. It's not a. But this is historically what's used in the bodybuilding world uh, because that's slow release. But, you know, like you did mention, eating late at night is going to elevate your cortisol and can possibly disrupt your sleep cycles, your normal sleep cycles. So, but here's the great thing about it is that your level of fitness, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter that much. It, it doesn't matter that much because, uh, and this was in Sleep Smarter, uh, individuals who are overweight, you know, classified as overweight or obese, we're talking about over 50% increase in cortisol when they eat a meal. For somebody who's at, at a healthy BMI, and you're actually extremely healthy, it's negligible. It's like a, I don't remember the exact number, but it's less than 10%. It's like 7% increase in cortisol, all right? And your body can clean that up pretty quickly too, especially when you're, when you're younger, you know? So I think that you can roll on pretty consistently with the things you're doing until, you know, mid 40s when you might want to reanalyze things. Let me... But caveat, you do, just because you are the person you are, you do want to continuously reanalyze still. But um, as far as interrupting your sleep quality, I think you're doing really solid. Follow-up question, though, do you have any noticeable issues with your sleep? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, not that I can... Yes. I already my wife is here. Do I, do I have any problems with my sleep? My wife's Akila. Oh, hey, Akila. She yes. actually introduced me to your podcast. So uh, I thank do, you, Akila. I do thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh. As soon as he gets home? Yeah. So, like, after work? Yeah. Did you take the um, chronotype quiz? I did not. From Dr. Bruce, you're a lion. I already know this. Yes, you're like me. Same thing. I fall asleep super fast. Like, it doesn't even make any sense, all right? <laughs> My wife, sometimes she takes a little bit longer to fall asleep, but um, and sh she likes to sleep a lot longer. She can sleep. She has a high sleep drive, is what we talked about with Dr. Bruce. I wake up early. I just get up. I'm ready to, to crush it. But then after work, like, after the work day's done, I can, I can literally just go to sleep at like eight o'clock. I could, if I didn't have a family. If it was just me, like I'm on the road now, so I'm going to bed super early when I can, and it's awesome. <laughs> but because of my life structure, you know, even though I'm sleepy, and there's, that's the thing, it's like there are things that we can do to have that extended energy, because I noticed this. And so I had to find things to optimize that later energy. And for me, it was very simple things, very, very simple things. Like, <laughs> what's so funny, like I've never talked about this stuff. Um, I try to actually avoid eating any carbohydrates in the afternoon, right? Because for me, it'll, it'll probably put me out, all right? So I save like my carbs for that last, like at dinner time, you know, when I can really just chill after that. Um, and another thing that I do is I, I try to get a little bit of exercise and movement in in the afternoon as well. All right, just like a some, something small, like, you know, um, just going for a walk, you know, something like that, just to get me going. And also with kids, you know, uh, I, you got to get your mindset right. So like my son, Brayden, we pick him up from school. He's like, what are we going to do? Like, you're my entertainment, bro. So I got to mentally get myself psyched. But um, what I'm saying all this to say is that you, we're a lot alike, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you're actually lined up more with how nature works, you know, and that's all good. But 
society doesn't necessarily work like that. So I already knew you were gonna, like there's no issues with your sleep. There's no, no problem, nothing to really, you're looking for what's that 1% that I can get better. So I, I really personally, in my professional opinion with this sleep equation, just keep doing what you're doing because it's working. All right, I hope that answers your question, man. Thank you. All right. My name's Mark, and uh, I've been listening to your show since about January, and I want to let you know that it's been life-changing, so thank you very much. Thank you, man. Uh, I received that. Yeah, thank it's you. Been, she knows. She hears it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my question is, I kind of hit a bump, okay. and I've struggled with this my entire life. It's consistency. So how do you deal with consistency? And then the other question I had is, when you fall off the horse, how do you get back up again? Like, what do you do to like dust yourself off and be like, all right, all right, Sean, like I got this, or all right, Mark, you know, I, I got this. Like, what, what's your philosophy behind that? Oh man, okay, that's a fantastic question, and this is going to speak to a lot of people. All right, this consistency. Uh, in my presentation for this event coming up, I'm actually going to talk about that as the part of the equation for success in business and in your health, you know, being Captain Consistency. And the Model Health Show is the most consistent thing I've ever done in my life, all right? And that's what's made it so successful. Um, but there have been many challenges along the way. So here's my number one secret and tip, and it's so simple, but most of this stuff is simple, is that when you fall, get right back up, all right? Just because you have a bad day doesn't mean you have to have a bad week. So just immediately after, enjoy it also. Enjoy that time of falling down. Like, it could be cool down there, you know? Like, <laughs> what are you guys doing up there, you know? But get back up. You know, each day is a clean slate. One of the things we do is we tend to postpone when we're gonna get back on it. You know, it's like, I'll, I'll try again on Monday, right? <laughs> Man, if I hear another person say this, I'm telling you. <laughs> Or I'm just waiting till the I'm waiting till next month. The first of the month, I'm 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 getting serious. You know, you don't need a special date or time. Just take action, right? If you fall down, just get back up. Because the best in the world, they have failures like consistently. Something comes up, especially if you have kids too. Like they're the king of curveballs. So, but if I miss my workout this day because of whatever reason. I'm gonna be in the gym the next day, no matter what, you know? So it's, first of all, I think it's really important to understand that it's actually good to fall, it's good to fail, but fail forward, you know, fail forward each time. And because you, you can learn something from it each time that you fail as well. You know, like, oh, I know, I know like five beers is too much, you know, like that's the, that makes me forget, you know, where, you know, where I peed yesterday or whatever, you know? So it's always a valuable opportunity for us. And I recommend embracing those times of like giving yourself, and actually it's really great for our metabolism, as we talked about with, with Dr. Tita, um, something I've been subscribed to for a long time. Like every now and then I just go ham, you know? I just go, I, I eat all kinds of, all kinds of stuff, just, you know? and. Um, but if, with, when I'm I'm not eating like Krispy Kremes. Let me make that clear. <laughs> but you know, like I, my wife, uh, she made some gluten-free chocolate chip cookies the other day. Yes, I said yes. I'll, I'll have some of these. I'll have quite a few. All right. <laughs> but this was after long week executing, big strength training day that day. You know, treat yourself. And don't make it such a big th thing like you fell off, you know? So I think that's important to give yourself those opportunities to uh, enjoy all these things that life has to offer, but get right back on it. A night out at the club or uh, Beyonce was in town recently in St. Louis. So I'm li literally, Beyonce's like, there's like fireworks, I'm yawning, like, because oh. I was sleepy. It was like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. But I still was there and I enjoyed it. You know, and just the next day I got right back on my game. 
you know, so I hope that answers the question. We got one more question. I want to add something oh, to yes. that. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jade. Yes, sir. Oh. I feel like Vanna. <laughs> <laughs> First and foremost, forgive and love yourself continually. Consistency can be defined as a noun, but let's embrace it as a verb in that by me continually pressing for that goal, I am consistent. I haven't abandoned my hopes, I haven't let go of my aspirations, and I'm still pressing for that mark. And anytime we go to a higher elevation, I'm gonna take credit for that one, I know you told me it. I know you did. There's gonna be turbulence. There's gonna be things that shift and rock. It's new territory. So of course the steps that we're used to taking will not be the same. They won't fit even in the same spaces. The strides won't be the same. The energy and effort will not be the same. And then the failure is not even a failure. It's to show your emotion. So celebrate your small victories. Ooh, I stumbled because I'm emotion. And the cool thing about walking is it's a natural progression. You put one foot forward, the other's gonna come. It may not come completely gracefully, or with, without any obstacles, but it will come forward, you know. So celebrate your victories, as small as you may think they are, they really add, to, add up to something great. A, a great day adds up to a great, great week, and so forth and so on. And if I've got seven good ones and one not so great, then that's kind of what the living is. We have great days, we have some that aren't so great. But every day that we're given is a part of the thing that we can use to press forward. So keep pressing and love, 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 and forgive yourself. Perfect. So, like, Thank you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who's got the last question? Hello, Hi. I'm Lisa. Hi. Uh, my question has to do with sleep. So I, I read your book, okay. and um, hormones have so much to do with it that when you get to a certain age, they start to change. And I'm like, hello, what is going on here? Yeah. So I did some of the steps in your book. And the one thing that I have a hard time is falling asleep. Okay. So I do get the part where if I stay up too late, I get that second yep. adrenaline and I'm up. Yeah. So I make sure it's nice and cool, like what you said, temperature, um, dark. Uh -huh but I can't like turn off the brain. Yes. I mean, I close my eyes and it's still going. So the only way I fall asleep is if the TV's on, but I heard that's a no-no. <laughs> so me and my friend, we share the same thing where I don't look at the TV, it's only on so I can keep hearing something and it can't be something interesting because then I won't fall asleep. And then that's how I fall asleep but I'm sure it's interfering with the quality of sleep that I have. So I'm just trying to figure out what works for me, because I know it. that you said if you have the TV on, it doesn't work. But for some reason, that allows me to fall yes. asleep, but the quality is probably not so that great. So is there someone else with you there? No, because my husband's like, turn off the TV. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's cool in the room. Yeah, so, but I'm I was tired. wondering if you had a, a partner with you there. So your husband's there with you? No, because I'll go to sleep first. He's a night owl. Got it, okay. And you are not a night owl. I'm not, but I do work out leaks. I teach fitness classes, so sometimes. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I'm a genius. I mean, like, oh, is that people, what you were thinking or no, something? No, 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 no. This <laughs> is great. This notes? is wonderful. This is wonderful. Because I have students tell me, I get home and I can't sleep after your class. <laughs> okay. So, thank you for that question, Lisa. Oh. You're amazing. Thank you. First thing, um, caring master practitioner 101, if you listen to somebody talk, they will tell you the cause and cure of what's going on with them. All right? We need to listen more and talk less if we want to help somebody. So just letting her go another layer deep, we start to find out that there's some interesting things here. You know, so I did talk about this study, you know, with Appalachian State that, you know, morning exercisers do tend to sleep better at night. But I didn't talk that much about evening exercisers. 
all right, because, you know, publisher or whatever, there's a lot that uh, could have gone into the book. But because evening exercise can still be okay as long as there's still enough time for your body to recalibrate. So my question to you is, what time are you leaving out of there, first of all? It varies. So, for example, Mondays, I'm home by 8. Okay. Wednesdays, I'm done by 9.30, home by 10. Okay, again, not a rocket scientist. <laughs> but obviously, if you're just coming home from a fitness class, there's two things going on. Number one, your cortisol is going to be elevated by the nature of you dancing around at night. Dancing, that's right. That's it, Zumba. <laughs> there you go. Shout out to Zumba. We should get like a live Zumba thing going in here too. Also, you're going to be in an atmosphere where you're basically, it's a manufactured daytime, all right? It's artificial daytime. So your circadian clock is thrown off. And I've got super respect for you teaching this class. But if your health is first, you really have to look at teaching at a different time of day. Maybe teaching the morning class, maybe, you know. Yeah. It's those three days. It doesn't matter because when you're throwing your circadian clock off, and this is what I cited this nurse's study, so it didn't matter whether or not the nurses worked, you know, five days a week on the night shift or if they, it alternated. It didn't matter as far as their increased rate of breast cancer, 30% greater in incidence of breast cancer if you work the night shift. All right. And it doesn't matter if you do it, you know, every other day or five nights a week, you know. It, it, your, your body never gets to, to normalcy, you know? And it's all about hormones. Like, we're linked up with nature, all right? So whenever something happens and things go askew, like, your body has to take time to try to reset. But when I wake up, I'm the type that I'm up, I'm up. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know if I'm getting that quality sleep. I mean, I'm waking up and I'm not Yeah, tired. so by you employing the things that you already know, your sleep quality is better than like 99.999% of the population, but for you it's just the going to sleep part is the issue, right? And that's what we're addressing here, is your, the cause is your cortisol is too high. And, by, and the other thing, so I mentioned two reasons why cortisol is elevated significantly, but also what does that do to your melatonin? Your sleep hormone is not getting secreted. So I thought about taking And so now, and so, so this is what we do, though. This is what we do to ourselves in culture is, I'll just take a pill. And we can catch ourselves in that because that's not the solution. Remove the behavior because that can lead you down another rabbit hole you don't want to go down, right? So TV's helping, but... <laughs> <laughs> TV's helping. It's not good. <laughs> do you have a comment or a question? You guys already know. Okay, so. Yes, of course. <laughs> True story, I used to work at a casino when I was in college, and like, I would literally dream like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yes, so, and it's also because of the schedule, like, I shortly thereafter leaving there, I'm going to sleep, and it's like, it's torture, you know? But this is like good torture that you're serving yourself and serving other people with, so I don't know. Is that like an oxymoron, good yeah, torture? I enjoy it. it's something I enjoy <laughs> yeah. Doing. So you got to look at and analyze. Like, is that worth compromise? Because you are missing out on some benefit there. Because sleep is really the thing that's transforming your body, your health, everything, your mental state. Um, but as she mentioned, so it's an app called Calm. Great recommendation. Because as soon as when she first started talking, if I would have interjected, we wouldn't have got to the core thing. Because, of course, I'm automatically like, she can't turn off her mind. Of course, she needs to train her mind, we right? We're going to try the app tonight. Okay. <laughs> but also, real talk, that, that's a Band-Aid solution if you're not removing the cause. You seriously, you have to be honest about what's most important, you know? Mm -hmm. And don't lie to yourself that I can't do this any other time. I can't teach any other time. Yes, if that's what's important to you. All right, because that's what, it, what it's really about is us being honest with ourselves. And also, uh, one other small thing, the television. I mean, okay, listen, okay, 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 can I talk? Okay, can I talk? Okay, 
<laughs> All right. Can I talk now? Okay. So, I get it. If I usually see that behavior in people who live by themselves, if I do see this behavior of somebody, the need to have the television on just for some background noise. So, you're bathing yourself in that artificial light. Okay, again, suppressing your melatonin. Even if you're not watching it, your skin has photoreceptors that pick this up, you know? So it's, n it's not the best behavior. There are other options. Even, you know what a great idea is to listen to a podcast, <laughs> right? While you're laying down. Interesting thing, because then I won't fall asleep. That's why I yeah. something on TV that I'm not interested in. There's some super boring podcasts out there. <laughs> this is not one of them, I but I'm yeah. I'm all of them to be like yours, yeah. so I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's his strategy. His strategy is to bore you to sleep. He tells you that. So um, there's, there's definitely strategies for that. So we've got to, you know, this is, um, we're, we're all adulting right now. We're adulting. That's not adulting behavior, all right? So we, the, the, the TV, but also, again, the big thing is just adjusting your schedule because you got this. I mean, there's something about you that, you know, we can kind of pick up. Like, you've got a vibrant spirit and you have a perfect fit for teaching a Zumba class. So make sure to keep doing it, but no, just... I love, I love teaching it, yes. Okay, but just ad really be honest about yourself about adjusting your schedule because it's totally possible, all right? All right. If you're doing it because you want to serve, we can serve better from a place of better health. You can provide better by being your best self. So if that's your goal, Dig in and create the best you you can to serve even greater. Now, if there's a movie going on in your mind, and, and I, I, it, happens to, it happens to us all, and as a mother, I'm thinking of a gajillion things as well before I go to sleep. This may be a great creative time for you and another opportunity to give by pulling out a journal, a pen and a paper. Then you can draw that energy out that's going on and put it on the paper and maybe discover some things, some real pure thoughts and things that are going on that can then in turn help even more people. So maybe even journaling. But yeah. consider, if you really want to serve, how can you serve from your best possible place? Love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes, that's what it's all about. Wow, everybody, holy moly. Um, <laughs> it's kind of weird to say thank you for joining me because you're like physically here. But everybody that's listening, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. Uh, I'm very, very honored and grateful to have you a part of this mission. Even though you're not present in this room, you're still a part of this mission in this community. And we have so much more greatness in store for you. I promise you that. So thank you so much for tuning into the show. Have an amazing day, and I'll talk with you soon.